And so I looked at just aviation in general. I, I, what I saw in aviation is that it's great. It's the future. You know, you think about um, Star Wars, Star Trek, Fifth Element, all the movies that project into the future, and it's all in the sky. It's all in the air. And I see that. I see that that's the, that's the case. And I went, well, what's a stepping stone? What's a way to get there? What's a way to make aviation more useful so that we get more people in aviation and bring it forward? And so I decided to, at that point, design something that will do that. And so the switchblade is the first vehicle we decided that would be able to pull that off. And today's consumers, people out there, they like nicely designed things. You know, the cars are pretty well defined and, and detailed. And people pay for that extra uh, to get something that looks good. And I think that that's what you need to have. You have something like a Wave Runner. If you had a kind of an average looking Wave Runner and a really sexy looking Wave Runner, the sexy one's going to sell two, three, four times as many. So I think that's obviously something that is uh, on anyone's mind, especially on my mind. You want to move a product into commercial viability, you have to be able to sell it. People have to want to buy it, be in it, around it. And that's part of that experience. And you have the aesthetic quality blended with that which is, um, you know, mechanical. It is functional. And just the, the ordering of it. Function comes first. You have to figure out what makes, what makes it work. And then you bring in the aesthetic quality as much as you can to get that, uh, the nicest quality. And I, and I think that that's what I see brought into uh, my design of aircraft and whatnot. If you see the switchblade, that's what most people recognize right off the bat. This one's different. There's a little higher grade of, of aesthetic to it. What we decided was that something that would bridge the gap between what we have now, which is all on the ground, and something in the air would be something that did both. But we realized that if you can't take your wings with you and the tail and everything and it function well on the ground, it's not going to be used. It's going to be a toy. It's going to be something that you wouldn't want to use it because it's got a $20,000 engine that you don't want to burn up going to get groceries. We want something that's useful. And so we were working to get that usefulness built into it, which is why we swing the wings closed under the belly. They're protected by clamshell doors on the road so the rock dings and grime don't reach that, uh, the wings to uh, get them in trouble. Likewise, the tail sucks forward over the top of the vehicle. So if you back into something, uh, it's your bumper that hits it. It's not the tail, and you don't have to worry about your tail feathers being damaged uh, without you knowing it. So those are the kinds of features that we went for, along with uh, sort of a look that people would say, hey, this is kind of cool. I like it and then bring more people into aviation. They don't have to fly. They can drive it and learn to fly. You're expanding aviation, and you want more of these out there. The one thing that stands in many people's minds as a roadblock or barrier is the fact that noise from the airports causes people around there to not want you to be around. So if you can create something that's quieter and uh, less obtrusive to the neighborhood, you'll be welcome. That extra vehicle traffic won't impact people's uh, willingness to have you in their space. The ducted fan in the quarter scale model now has tested out uh, exactly the way we were hoping it would. Uh, produced a tremendous amount of thrust, no uh, perceivable uh, inlet choke on the inlets. So we're happy with that. Yeah, the ducted fan uh, does two things for us, one of which is it gives us something that we can capture the noise and make it quieter as a signature. Uh, the second is that it tucks away the propeller on the ground so it's not out there. Uh, if it were to be spinning, it wouldn't be in a way in a position where somebody could accidentally brush up against it and, and cause an accident in that fashion. It's, it's, it, it's in its own environment. and I think that the function-wise of the ducted fan, uh, so far it's working out quite well. I think you have to design it the right way for it to work. I mean, jet engines are essentially ducted fans with an engine and a core. And that's, uh, with a high bypass jet engine, that's what you have. The other engine is a Coates International uh, engine out of Newark. It's the it's rotary valves, yeah. yeah. And uh, we already talked to him, gone over our requirements. Um, we're entering into contract to have him design and, and build engines specifically for our use, which would be uh, aircraft-ready engines but also very useful on the ground, 
great gas mileage and half the emissions of a typical automobile engine. The wing swing mechanism is actually uh, one of the patents that we filed uh, and it covers uh, basically what we did to make this a useful and non-headache swing wing. If you talk to the F-111 drivers or the guys with the swing wing fighters, uh, they're all for, hey, this thing works. You can get the titanium hub in there. Uh, it's heavy, but it'll take the loads. But it's also an, a nightmare on maintenance, and they'll be the first to say, this is not the way you really want to build a fighter. So I looked at that first thing when the engineer said, swing wing, and I said, no way. <laughs> We're not going to do that. So we had a telescoping wing at that point and, and had a different approach to things. But the more I got thinking about it, and I, I tend to stay up at night sometimes till 2, noodling along because I can't sleep anyway. And so I just noodle along, and pretty soon I'm going, you know, if we just located those hinge, hinge points back further uh, to the rear and outward a little bit, not where the loads come in, but off that path, you could still swing the load, the wings out, and actually it gives you another, we got another three feet of wingspan that way. Um, and so that created more wing for us. It created a, a method so that we could swing the wings out and lock them in place. Then the, wings, the wing uh, loads go up to that point into the fuselage uh, carry-through structure. And, and that's how the wing's uh, structure is carried through, not through the hinge itself. So the hinge is very small and light, and it's there mostly just to get the wings in and out.